Brilliant. Right. It looks like um, everyone um, is in. Um, so uh, we'll get started. Um, thank you so much for joining our virtual open day today for the Institute for Sustainable Resources. Um, we're here today to talk about our three MSc programmes, um, the Economics and Policy of Energy and the Environment, which is my programme. I'm Dr. Catherine Willen. I'll be introducing that. My colleague Samuel Tang will be talking about the Business and Sustainability MSc, um, and Francesca Kilpatrick will be talking about sustainable resources, economics, policy, um, and transitions. Um, and those are the three courses that you can study with us. Um, I'm also going to start out by just introducing UCL um, and what you can get out of your year studying with us. Um, but before I do that, um, I just want to say we've tried to keep, the, keep this presentation fairly short um, because there's a lot of you here um, and we know you've probably got questions. Um, so before I launch into this slide, if you could think as you go along, if you've got any questions, type them into the chat. Um, because we want to be able to present all the stuff we've got, um, please don't, uh, you won't be able to say anything. And so just hold those questions if you want to ask them in person or type them into the chat and we'll answer them as we go along. Um, but as I said, we have kept this quite short, so there's plenty of time um, for you to ask questions. Okay. All right, um, as I promised, um, I'm going to start out by just introducing UCL. And so you can see on the slide that Sam's very kindly put up here. Um, one of the things that UCL is particularly proud of um, is what we call disruptive thinking. Um, so we were founded back in 1826 um, and we were one of the first universities um, to admit women on the same basis as men um, and to admit people from all different sorts of religion. Um, and that is a, an inclusive, outward looking um, environment that we are very proud of um, and that we still um, look up to now. Um, in the Institute for Sustainable Resources, we've been running programs on sustainability for, for over a decade um, now. Um, and we like to think those are exceptional programs. Um, that's not just me saying that. Uh, one of our external examiners commented about one of our programs that it was leading in its field. Um, so again, we, we feel quite proud of that, but we don't try and get complacent. We know that sustainability is a field that evolves really fast. Um, education evolves really fast. Um, you as students um, evolve really fast. So we do try and grow um, and adapt um, as we go along. Now, as you listen to each of the different MSCs being presented, all three of them, you will see that they've got a core subject, a core focus that's different um, in each of them. And that's important for you to understand. Um, and we provide that depth, if you like, in the particular topic that you're interested in. But one of the really interesting things about UCL is that we are a massive university. We're not specialized in science, um, particularly we're not a, just a business school. We've got this big multidisciplinary um, background. We've got, I think, about 16,000 staff all doing different things. Yeah. Um, so our MSCs give you scope to explore other perspectives as well. So each with complementing those core, there's a lot around um, different perspectives on sustainability that, that you really need. No, no one subject is going to solve sustainability on its own. Now, UCL is one of the top 10 universities in the world. So if you get a degree from UCL, we like to think that, you, you know, that, that gives you confidence um, in that piece of paper, in that certificate. Um, but with that, you will need to work hard. Uh, we aim to stretch you um, in this qualification and we aim to develop some of that disruptive thinking, that innovative, creative thinking um, around um, the issues that our MSc focus on. Our alumni, the, the students that go through our courses, go on to a wide variety of career paths. So some might go and work in the private sector, in business, in finance, in consulting. But we also have alumni working in governments all around the world as well, um, as well as NGOs, think tanks, um, pressure groups. So it gives you a, a sort of an opportunity, a springboard for all sorts of different careers. Um, and what's really nice about UCL is we're located in London where lots of those employers are. So it's a good place to look for a job. Um, it's also a really fun city to spend uh, a year in as well. Um, so um, do you want to turn over the slide? Yeah. So. Institute for Sustainable Resources is part of the Bartlett faculty. Um, the Bartlett is the number one um, ranking for research power um, in the built environment in the UK, the last time that that assessment was done. 
And we're also number one in the world for architecture and the built environment on the latest QS World University rankings. So I briefly mentioned your future and your career, and clearly that's what you're looking at um, when you look through your MSc, you're not looking just about what you're gonna learn, but what it's gonna give you. Um, so what knowledge and skills would an MSc at the Institute for Sustainable Resources help you develop? Um, we think three categories of, of knowledge and skills. So I guess there's a lot of noise out there about sustainability, a lot of media comments from various people. Um, but what's really important and what an MSc gives you is really fundamental in-depth expert knowledge so that you can engage in that debate um, with confidence and with authority. And that really is what an, a UCL MSc is going to give you. So it might be around uh, business practice. It might be around energy or environment policy. It might be ways of conceptualizing or measuring the environment and crucially about the socio and economic impacts of climate change resources um, or business and sustainability. As I said, we want you to think about those things in a really critical, intelligent way. These things are interconnected. Sustainability is really complex. You need to think in systems. You need to think about how you would plan an approach to that and really engage critically with that. And that's where we're really going to stretch you to think intelligently about these issues so that the solutions you come up with are actually implementable, practical um, um, and integral, if you like, holistic. Um, and finally, you want to come out of your MSc with some skills um, for your future career. And we help you develop those, whether it's leadership or collaboration. And those things are both important, right? Um, problem solving, um, as well as, you know, thinking about um, uh, some of the other issues that you might need to do, whether it's reflecting on what you've learned um, as well, which is equally vital. OK. Um, those are some of the overall benefits, if you like, for the Institute for Sustainable Resources and studying at UCL. Um, as I mentioned, we're each gonna talk about um, our individual programs. Uh, so as I'm currently talking at you, um, I shall continue doing that. Um, as I said, I'm Catherine Willen. I'm the program director um, for the economics and policy of energy and the environment. Um, and it's a very long name, right, um, for an MSc. So we tend to shorten that to EPE. Um, but it's also, it's quite useful to have a long name because it really does tell you what, what, what the program does. So when I talked about core subject, our core subject is economics. So there's a quantitative element. Just go back a moment, Sam. I'm going to still, I'm still talking about my title. Uh, so there is a, there is a, a quantitative element there. Um, so if you're going to look at energy and the environment, might, you might want to think about it from an economic perspective. So how do you put a price on carbon, for instance? But that policy element, that qualitative element, the multidisciplinary element is also there because you can't put a price on carbon if it's not politically acceptable, if your voters won't accept that. So those two things work in tandem. Um, you can't look equally at the environment um, separately from energy, these things interrelate. But if I have to say, um, I think our MSc concentrates more on energy and climate change, you will see more of an emphasis on that. Okay, all right, turn over, Sam, <laughs> thank you. Right, uh, so the structure, we have three terms, obviously. In the first term, you take four core modules. In the second term, you take three optional modules. And in term three, you take a dissertation. And that is underpinned by um, a research concepts um, and methods course that helps you develop the skills that you need to do well in all of those modules. So in term one, um, as I said, you take these five core modules um, and everyone takes the same five core modules. Um, and the reason for that is to make sure that you all have um, a rounded and in-depth common grounding um, in the issues that are really, really important. So everyone gets the same knowledge that prepares them for the rest of the course. And also you get to know each other as well, which is nice. So as a new cohort, you work together. So we take you through environmental and resource economics, which is the quantitative part of our course. We introduce you to energy modeling and scenarios. You do not need a background in modeling to do this course, um, but it's a really, it really allows us to draw on some of the, uh, the key expertise that is very, very particular to UCL actually. So it's a really interesting module. 
We have a policy module around measuring and assessing in the environment and how one protects it and the sort of laws that you need um, to do that. As I said, we have an emphasis um, on energy and climate change, and that really comes through in our political economy module, looking at some of those massive geopolitical challenges around energy, um, of which there are many. Um, and then that research concepts um, and methods module that is skills based. In term two, our students choose three optional modules um, from a selection, um, and that selection may vary slightly uh, year on year, um, and, uh, but you know, this is a sort of pretty indicative list of the sort of things that we offer. So uh, unlike some MSCs, we don't put you down a particular route. Um, you are free to choose what you like out of those three modules. So you can either choose to deep dive if you like, you could take three economics modules like econometrics, uh, behavioral economics, um, economics for sustainable decision making. You could deep dive into policy through innovation, um, through uh, policy implications in developing countries. You could perhaps look more at modeling. You could look at industry implications for new energy business models, finance or business and sustainability, or even electricity market design. Um, it's up to you, yeah, you can, choose to specialize or you can mix and match. So really you can start to develop uh, your own specialisms um, as you go through. Um, again, with, you know, keep underpinning with this research concepts and methods to help you. Then in term three, all our students take uh, a dissertation. So this is a piece, an in-depth piece of your own research. So again, you can see that that route where you start out together um, in all your core modules, you start to specialize in term two. And by the time you got to term three, um, you're really finding uh, your own niche, your own interest um, to explore. Um, and students do explore really, really different things. Um, I put some fairly random examples on there just to try and uh, illustrate the, the, the diversity of things that, that students do actually. So it could be alternative fuels for aircraft, blockchain and lithium mining, um, photovoltaic waste recycling policy in different countries, natural gas prices post COVID, or even gender equality and social inclusion um, in energy planning in Kenya. So all of those different perspectives uh, within that course umbrella and very, very different methods. Okay, my final slide is around how to apply. Um, we are looking for a minimum upper second class um, degree, usually in economics um, or STEM. Um, we do have exceptions to that. We are quite, as I said, multidisciplinary. So if you can you know, demonstrate how you've got an aptitude for some sort of quantitative analysis, um, either through previous study or through work experience, we can make exceptions. But what's really important is that in your personal statement, you explain how your background relates to the program and just what you're trying to achieve through those, through your studies, if you were to join us on this course. Our applications are open now and run until the end of May, but we get hundreds um, of applications a year. So we would encourage you uh, to apply early if you can. Um, and the link to the graduate prospectus is there. OK, thank you. Um, that's me. I shall now hand over to Sam, who's going to talk about his programme. Thank you, Catherine, uh, for, for sharing all of that around ISR and EP. So my name is Dr. Samuel Tang. I'm the programme director for our Business and Sustainability MSc. Uh, the Business and Sustainability MSc is not solely designed to produce sustainability officers or specific roles in business. Rather, it's aimed to develop graduates with a set of competencies and a level of knowledge to make decisions that lead businesses towards a just sustainable transformation. The programme has been designed to provide graduates with key sustainability knowledge from a local to global perspective, particularly in the context of how businesses can help us in, in this process. In terms of our programme structure, um, very, what, what is clearly different to EP and SREP is we do not have any optional modules. So you will be taking uh, eight compulsory modules across term one and two. And then you'll be taking a final compulsory module, our capstone project, uh, that runs across all three terms, but the bulk of the work is done in, in term three. 
So more specifically, in the first term, you will learn about the business case for sustainability. You'll look at approaches to address the sustainability gap in business and how to consider sustainability from a strategic perspective. You will also acquire knowledge of how to use data to support decision making. In the second term, you will learn about how business sustainability operates in different contexts globally, the role of finance, technology and innovation in meeting the sustainable development goals and how it can enable business value creation and you explore sustainable business in practice. And then, as I mentioned, in term three and, and the summer, you will complete a capstone project, which is an individual project that considers a practical mainstream uh, business sustainability problem, opportunity or topic that you've covered across the program beforehand. Now, collectively, over the program's journey, the modules also equip you with some of the skills that Catherine mentioned earlier around leadership, decision-making, problem-solving, critical thinking. And these skills are essential for any workplace that you end up going into. So we really want to give you that knowledge and skills to ensure that you can make a positive contribution towards solving the world's problems. In terms of going into a bit more detail around that final project, our capstone project, um, what's quite unique about this is that rather than a um, typical master's dissertation that is very much focused on research, our capstone project in this MSc allows you to write towards a particular audience with the idea in mind that you choose an audience you would like to potentially work in after your MSc. So, Essentially, the focus of the capstone project is that you're applying some of the concepts, tools, frameworks, or skills covered in the program to a practical uh, mainstream business sustainability problem, opportunity, or topic. But in terms of how you write that and how you uh, get across your key messages, you may write that towards these three different audiences shown. So the first audience is a research audience. And this is very much geared to allow you to um, write towards a more academic field. Individuals that may want to write towards an uh, a research audience may be thinking of having a career in research, maybe carrying on in academia or ending up in a, a think tank with a primary research role. Uh, you can either, you, the alternate option is you could write towards a business audience. Here you would write recommendations that would be very applicable to careers in the private sector or the final audience you can write towards is policy and here you would develop um, outcomes that would be very much aligned to careers in civil uh, civil service uh, public and third sector work now crucially as i've mentioned we're allowing you to, you to choose that audience so that you can uh, develop a a really tangible output that you can take forward to wherever you go uh, in your future career. In terms of applying, uh, we're open now like EP and we are open until the end of May. So the same uh, application window. And we are also very highly competitive. Um, what I want to emphasize is that any offers we make will be based on the strength of the application and merit. So we really encourage you to think carefully about your application and how you address the statement criteria questions that are outlined on the graduate perspective perspectives page. Um, and you can find that under the section that says next steps, which is towards the end of the page. Now, crucially, we welcome applications from all disciplinary backgrounds um, and a broad range of work experiences with the entry requirements set at a first or upper second class UK bachelor's degree um, or an overseas qualification of an equivalent standard. We uh, also require you uh, to demonstrate that you have an English, English language level of two. Now, these while these are our requirements, they can be relaxed in consideration of UCL's access and participation plan. For example, we will strongly consider applicants that can demonstrate relevant work experience in business, 
government or third sector organizations, and that they can really demonstrate their commitment to sustainability. Uh, they can demonstrate their leadership, um, prior experience or potential, the aptitude for teamwork and collaboration, uh, their ability for creativity and critical thinking, as well as their adaptability to engage in the learning process. Now, as part of your application, you will need to write a personal statement. And as I've mentioned, there are some guiding questions that can be found uh, on the graduate prospectus under the section next steps. Now, I wanted to just finally end by giving you a few tips on how you can address those questions and what we're really looking for for you to help shape your, your statement. The first thing that's really important to emphasize is that we really um, see a maximum of two pages. Uh, you should be able to get across your key points in, in those two pages instead of um, providing more, more than two pages because quite often what you think you're adding in terms of content actually um, waters down what you've previously said and it can be harder to distinguish out your, your key attributes. The second uh, thing is to clearly explain why you are interested in studying the Business and Sustainability MSc. What in particular interests and motivates you about this topic? Uh, why have you decided to study this topic now? And what knowledge and skills can you draw upon from what you've previously learned or from your professional experience? Thirdly, can you identify a particular module in the programme that catches your eye? What does that or why does that module catch your eye? Can you explain that? And how do you anticipate that module or topic helping to inform your future career aspirations? Fourthly, for any work experience that you want to share, make sure you're specific about your particular role and what you're doing in that, that work experience. So um, how did you, for example, help a team complete a particular project? You know, what was that project about? Who did you work with and, and how did you work with them? What was your particular role? Were you the, the leader of that? Did you organize the planning? And then what were the potential outcomes of the work that you did? Um, and then the fifth thing to really think about is to explain your future career plans and how this MSc in particular will help you achieve that. Um, now, if you're in the current situation where you don't have a particular career path in mind, you know, that is fine. You know, for myself personally, I didn't know what I wanted to do for a very long time. So if you don't have a clear career path, think instead of the kinds of opportunities that you hope to get out of this MSc um, that you hope will spark your uh, interests um, in, in a way to communicate what this degree could do for you, not just for a potential career, but, you know, leading in terms of your thinking and knowledge. And then just as a final reminder about your application, when you're putting it together, do take your time. Yes, we have a very competitive pool of applicants, um, and that is that's fairly standard across all of the ISL programs. Um, so I really encourage you to take your time before you submit and carefully review your application because you can. It, it's quite easy to make mistakes when you're rushing and it's better to take, just take an extra few hours to really make sure that you're addressing all of the questions that we've asked you in the statements. So I'll now hand over to uh, my colleague Francesca to talk about uh, SRET. Thanks, Sam. Uh, so hi, everybody. Uh... My name is Francesca Kilpatrick, and I'm the Programme Director of the Masters in Sustainable Resources, Economics, Policy and Transitions. So we are another master's degree with a very long name. Um, and our kind of key focus is on uh, resources, which is what distinguishes us from uh, the other two programmes that you've heard about today. So we are looking at resources and sustainable resource management um, from multiple different perspectives. So from an economics perspective, from a policy perspective, and then looking sort of towards green transitions in the future. Um, thanks, Sam, if you can move on. So uh, we uh, 
it, this is the program structure that you can expect from uh, this course. So uh, like um, both of the other uh, masters that we've heard about today, um, we have term one um, is all core modules. So everybody takes the same courses. Um, and we start with uh, introduction to sustainable resources, challenges and principles. So this module uh, really sort of discusses the problems that we face in sustainable resource management today and the kind of principles by which we would start to uh, address or measure those challenges um, and look for solutions. Um, the second one of the core modules here is called going to be called Foundations of Environmental Economics. Um, so we don't uh, require uh, an economic background, um, as I'll talk about in a moment, but we're really keen that everybody comes out of the degree um, with a good kind of foundational understanding of uh, economic principles more generally, and then specifically environmental and ecological economics as an approach. We have a module on policies for sustainable resources. So that's looking at uh, the different kind of ways a policy might get through the political process, um, how you might price various resources, um, how you kind of manage the the sort of sustainable uh, uh, delivery of resources to different parts of uh, for parts of an economy or parts of um, a nation, state or geographical area. Um, and sort of looking specifically about how the policy process affects, affects all of those things. And then finally, in term one, we have this module, Tools for Assessing Sustainable Resources. So one of the things that we spend quite a lot of time on this course is measurement um, and measuring the problems, because um, the it's very difficult to make effective uh, polit policy, political and economic changes if you don't uh, have a good understanding of what the situation is and the various tools and measuring uh, uh, processes that have been invented to get answers to those questions. That's what we do in that module there. So then moving on to term two, um, we then having looked at the foundations of environmental economics in term one, we then move into uh, resource economics and policy so that we really get into the kind of application of the economic principles that we've learned in term one. Um, and how those play out uh, in terms of developing policy specifically about um, economic management of resources. And then we also have this future resource pathways and visions. And this is a really exciting um, and fun module where you look at the green transition and the kind of sustainable resources transition. And we think a lot about the future and where we're headed um, and the kind of solutions that we might expect to see coming around the corner um, and also the problems that still exist. And we get you to start thinking about um, how we might try and solve those problems in the future. And then like um, EPE, uh, we have these two optional modules where you get to decide what it is that you wish to study. So you can have um, you can begin to focus your attention a bit more directly um, and you can, again, focus that in a more uh, industry focused way or on kind of uh, policy, um, civil service, that sort of thing, uh, or go directly into um uh, perhaps, you know, finance or law, whatever your background happens to be. Um, across both term one and term two, uh, we think in all the modules about uh, research methods. Um, and there are some supplementary lectures um, on kind of research methodology, um, really pointing towards the term three um, dissertation project. So this is very much like uh, EPI, as Catherine was talking earlier. Um, we you have a sustained piece of research um, that we teach you how to approach research. We teach you how to find a good research question to kind of formulate a good research question. Um, and this should hopefully give you uh, the confidence to know that when you go into work, um, whether it is a research related work or um, something more kind of industry or uh, practical related, and um, that you have the confidence that you have created an original piece of research um, that you can talk about that nobody else will have done. 
And that's something that can be really valuable for talking about in job interviews and things like that. Um, term three is also when we have our uh, in-person examinations. So resource economics and policy um, module in term two has an in-person exam that happens in term three. And then it's possible that your optional modules might also have exams. <clears throat> um, yeah, great. Thanks, Sam. Um, so here are the list of the optional modules that we host um, on uh, SREPT, so the Sustainable Resources Masters. Um, some of these overlap with, um, with EPI, um, and some of them are hosted kind of specifically for SREPT students. Um, and you can see here that you can, again, go into more kind of uh, measuring or uh, modeling sort of approaches with um, different assessment tools uh, like data analytics or life cycle assessment. Um, if you want to go into a more kind of business focus, uh, you could choose environmental and social sustainability risk management um, or the one at the bottom here, um, new energy business models. Um, we have quite a strong focus on uh, the circular economy and this kind of circularity of uh, resources across the program. Um, and this is also the point at which we get to really start digging into what circularity means um, and how you start creating that on modules like industrial symbiosis, um, life cycle assessment and things like that. Great. Um, so like the other two, uh, we are open now um, and our application deadline is the same. So the end of May, uh, we also get a lot of applications. So in the hundreds um, and we so I would recommend that if you are very keen on SREP, then you apply as early as possible. Um, we also require a two one or above um, in terms of uh, the UK bachelor's degree or an equivalent overseas qualification. Um, and English language level two. So it's not uh, it's not n completely necessary for you to have a first degree, which is kind of quantitative or economics based. Um, so we do accept uh, relevant degrees in the fields of physical or political sciences, um, of course, economics, uh, geography, law, engineering, um, but we also accept kind of humanities background students. If you have a more kind of politics background, that can also be a really interesting field to come from. Um, if you do not have quantitative methods somewhere in your uh, academic or professional past, um, then we'd want to see in your personal statement uh, about kind of any extra experience that you had using those methods or some kind of evidence that you are willing and able to learn to use those quantitative methods because of the economic modules uh, on the course, which do require that. Um, we also expect to see in your application, again, this personal statement, um, it's always really good to hear about specific modules that you're interested in uh, taking. Um, and also uh, include here any relevant professional or voluntary experience. Um, specifically, we're interested in reading about how it this, pro this professional or voluntary experience improved your skills or understanding. Um, so uh, I'd be as specific as possible and you can at that. And we're really interested in hearing your voice um, and what you, you learned personally. Um, and then uh, as I think is the case across all three programs, um, we also will be looking at the references, um, at least one of which should be academic, um, but one of them can also be from work experience. So we've told you today about three master's programs. Um, sometimes uh, you, it can be difficult to work out the differences between the three. So we've just pulled this diagram together to hopefully help you understand the differences between the three programs. So I'm going to talk first about this, uh, about SREP at the top. So again, as I said, uh, our focus is very much on resources, um, but also the kind of circular economy and sort of creating a uh, circularity in resource management. Um, we have this environmental and ecological economic um, process view. Um, and then finally, I really want to highlight again, um, 
that we do quite a lot on uh, analysis and measuring measurement tools. Um, so the focus on life cycle analysis um, and material flow analysis, life cycle assessment, sorry, life cycle assessment and material flow analysis um, are really big parts of both the core modules. And also we have a specialist optional module, particularly about that. Um, I'll hand over to Sam now. Thank you, Francesca. So, um... I just briefly talk about the business and sustainability MSc. So choose this MSc if you're particularly interested in understanding and developing skills that inform sustainable business practice, society and governance and systems thinking. So all of our modules speak to these different elements. So the modules, principles and paradoxes, measuring and reporting, the responsible leadership, uh, technology and innovation modules at their core, are looking at different facets of sustainable practices in business. The modules consumer behavior, um, principles and paradoxes, climate finance, and technology innovation lean into the societal angle in terms of looking at how different stakeholders across society are responding to uh, the sustainability challenge that we're experiencing and how they engage with one another and also the shifts in thinking required to uh, achieve this sustainable transformation. And then the modules, uh, International Dynamics and Global Governance, um, Responsible Leadership, and the Business and uh, Sustainability Capstone Project, explore the governance aspect and policy angles of the sustainability transition and their meaning and application in business. Even while the core domain of the module may focus on one dimension of business and sustainability, there are frequent overlaps uh, with other related aspects. For example, a module on business will also touch upon regulation and governance uh, to give you that broader picture to understand that the world is a complex interconnected uh, place. And in line with this, the programme adopts a systems thinking approach looking at the contemporary environmental, social and economic challenges that we're facing in a whole, instead of focusing on a specific sector or, or particular topic of, of interest. So it's a very broad uh, look to understand how we can address the system as a whole. I'll hand over to Catherine. Thank you, Sam. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is our last slide. Um, we've got lots of questions to deal with. So. Um, why what's different about um epe um as i mentioned we do have more of an energy um and climate change focus um particularly in some modules actually so some of them are more environmental but we, we do probably look more at energy and climate change than we do at say biodiversity or circular economy in the depth that, that francesca's program does um we do have um as i mentioned an economics um core module in the first term and optional economics modules as well so you do need to have that interest and that attitude in economics eric has just asked an, a sensible question about what if i don't feel up to speed on those things um we do in ep um have um some pre-course work um around economics and maths um and we also have a sort of parallel um support workshops going through the term to upskill you in those as well if needed um, and I think the other aspect that I thought needed highlighting was the modelling. Um, we've got such a great modelling team um, in, in UCL, in our, in our Energy Institute. Um, and to answer Clement's question, I think that's one of the distinct, distinguishing factors, if you like, of EPE, is those combinations of those things aren't necessarily found elsewhere. Um, I was going to cheat as well, actually, um, and responding to Clement, because I think actually, you know, whichever one of these, um, they're all good, right? Um, but I think choosing Institute for Sustainable Resources is a good choice. And I think it's a good choice for three reasons, Clement, and anyone else listening. Um, it's a re We work here because we love it, yeah? Um, and we like collaborating. It's a really interesting interdisciplinary place to work. You can just see from the slide all the interesting stuff that we're doing, yeah? And you get access to that. I think our staff are great, right? We've got staff who've been doing this stuff for years, for decades, and we've got new staff who are just starting out and doing really interesting cutting edge stuff. Um, and I think our students are great as well. Well, all of us on this call go in and teach um, and help students. Um, and we have a lovely selection of students each year and you get to meet um, and 
network with people with an interest in sustainability from all around the world. Um, so, you know, that that would be my reasons. Thank you. And, and, and just to add to that, um, re regardless of what programme you choose, you will have opportunities to network across the pr free programmes. So Catherine, Francesca and I and, and the teams for each programme work together in terms of organising those career events for you to integrate and get to know one another, to share your learning experience and ideas to cross pollinate. And that's what ISR and UCL and Basir are very good at doing. Do we want to stop sharing the screen and stop the recording so that we can engage with a few more questions? 